What's up guys, just on the way back from London, having given another one of my F1 talks, today talking to a, a huge property management company about the uh, importance of Formula 1 pit stops and how the, uh, the philosophy behind a pit stop of looking at lots of tiny little marginal gains, little improvements in loads of areas can be applied to a massive organisation, global company like the one I spoke to today. Uh, so that was all really good, uh, loads of good questions, lots of good stuff talking about Formula 1 and that's what we're here for today, talking about more Formula 1. Today though, all about the Japanese Grand Prix. And I can't wait to get home, talk you through the race weekend, but then get on the Xbox and do some laps of this incredible Suzuka circuit. Love that place. So what is it about Suzuka then? Because it's a man's circuit, isn't it? I know that sounds really old school, but that's because it is old school. It's an old school track. It's tough on the cars. It's tough on the power units. Massive amount of time. In fact, I think I'm right in saying this is the circuit with the most time per lap at full throttle. So the engines and the power units get a really tough time. It's tough on tyres as well. The circuit is really abrasive and rough and old school, which means that wear is high, degradation is high as well. Pirelli are bringing the hardest tyres, the hardest compounds uh, within their range to this particular race weekend a step harder than they were this time last year. And that's their kind of thinking at the moment, to try and allow the drivers to push all the way through a race without having to manage the tyre wear too much by backing off and driving slowly. So we are going to see tyres that fall away towards the end of stints. We're going to see power units that have to be looked after, potentially some kind of failures and blow-ups. Those kind of things can really come into their own, uh, come into play uh, around Suzuka. So this is a tough place to go. It's tough on the drivers because it's a circuit that needs bravery at every single point. A circuit that you put a foot wrong, you're on a, you're on a section of grass and you can be spiralling off at very high speed into a wall. So it really does separate the men from the boys. It tests the drivers and when I've driven it round on the Xbox in the past, you can tell, and I'll show you in a moment, you can tell just how on the limit you have to be to get a lap around this place. It's one of those circuits that's limited in terms of its grip by lateral uh, grip levels rather than longitudinal. It's not about braking and traction events, it's about high speed grip. How much can the car hang on? at high speed around these really fast flowing corners. You can probably tell from the way I'm talking about this. I love it! <laughs> so, what do all those things mean in terms of the challenge for a team? Because if it's tough on a power unit, what do you do about it? Well, what you do about it is you build up with your engine or power unit usage towards Suzuka. So if Suzuka is a big target, like for example Red Bull have done, Toro Rosso took engine penalties previously to bring a new up, uh, engine upgrade for the, for the newest spec for this particular round. Obviously it's Honda's home Grand Prix, but it's also a big race, tough on power units. They want to put the best showing on possible. When it comes to the amount of mileage that you're allowed to do in each of the engine modes, you will make sure that you've saved enough of what you need for Suzuka if that falls within your engine phase, uh, usage phase. So if you've got the third race, for example, on the same power unit, for the first two races with that power unit, you will have set your usage limits with Suzuka in mind, knowing that you've got an awful lot of time at full throttle, you're gonna be pushing the power unit to its limit, so you have to factor all that in when you start dividing up how much time you can spend at each different power mode for the races that that engine or power unit has to survive for. So it's very much a factor around here. Uh, you definitely want to be able to give it full beans around this circuit because you're on full throttle for so long. If you're not running at your optimum or your maximum, you will get swallowed up through some of the really high speed stuff, the longer straights as well. Um, power delivery is also important as well because when you're going through these really high speed changes of direction where the car is teetering on the limit of its traction ability, you want a very smooth delivery of that power. So if you're on and off the throttle through those really, particularly the first part of the lap, the S's, um, you've got to have really smooth power delivery because anything that's not smooth, anything spiky, 
in terms of, of power delivery will upset or could upset the car, could introduce some oversteer and just spit you off. As soon as you lose traction, you are off around a circuit like this, particularly in that first part of the lap. Um, when you're talking about the car being balanced, when I talk about and anybody talks about the car balance, what they mean is the balance between front and rear grip. So on a circuit like this, where you're, as I say, on the limit of lateral traction, lateral grip, you want a perfectly balanced car. If your car is too much um, favoured towards understeer, that means that at the limit of traction, it'll be the front end of the car that starts to break free first and introduce understeer, where the front can't grip anymore, the front tyres give up, the front slides away and you end up going straight on into the gravel traps. If it's at the rear end, if your car is, is, is kind of hinted more towards an oversteery balance, it'll be the rear end that'll give up traction first when you put the whole thing through such high speed lateral grip limits. Uh, and situations like the S's uh, at the start of the lap, which you'll see in a moment, are an exact example of that. What you want is a perfectly balanced car where if you push the car over its lateral grip, grip limit, ideally, in an ideal world, all four tyres, if you really push it, would break traction together and you'd end up with a four wheel drift. That's the best, that's the perfect car balance. It's highly unlikely that you ever end up with that because it can hurt you at other parts of the lap and what you really want, some drivers prefer a slightly more car, a car that's slightly more on the nose, some prefer to be able to control the grip at the rear with the, with the throttle, so there's a huge amount of driver preference, but when you're going through this really swift, almost full throttle sections where massive an abrupt change of direction, the car balance is really, really important to, to first of all being able to stay on the track, but then to be able to keep to the preferred racing line and therefore the quickest racing line. Any slight twitch of oversteer or understeer can just push you offline by a metre or two, and when you've done that, you've, you've ruined the next two corners by having to slow right down to get yourself back on that racing line and be able to make the corner and your lap time's gone. So there is a lot of setup work to be done uh, around this circuit. Obviously lots have been done already in the simulators, but when they get there on Friday, and we don't know what the weather's going to be like of course, because that's hanging over us with this typhoon coming in, but uh, weather dependent, it's all about finding the balance of the car uh, through the practice sessions that we get. It could well be that a practice, one of those race weekends where the practice sessions could end up meaning either nothing or very little depending on how the weather falls between Friday and Sunday. At the moment I think the latest forecast as we stand right now is that the uh, typhoon will hit on Saturday. Um, you know we've had this before I think 2004 when I was there we had to cancel Saturday because of a typhoon coming in. We qualified on Sunday morning, that happened again, didn't it, a few years later, I forget the year, 2009 or 10, can't remember. Um, so we've had it a couple of times where we've had to qualify on a Sunday morning. The organisers will always try and get an actual qualifying session done wherever possible, rather than trying to form a grid from practice sessions or championship board or anything like that. If there's any way around it, they will get qualifying happening, even if it's on a different day. So let's keep an eye on that. But it could be one of those race weekends where practice means nothing, and that can almost shake up the grid and give us something quite exciting when the race happens, and it looks like it will on Sunday. Uh, so that's all brilliant. I really can't wait for all of that. What else have we got to talk about? Uh, done tyres, done power units. Um, of course, aerodynamics, again, when you're on the limit of the car, uh, play a big role at high speed like this, um, where you're, li you're relying on both mechanical grip of the car through the tyres, but also aero loads to push the car down into the tarmac. And it's one of those where, because it's high speed, the faster you go, the more downforce you get, and therefore the more grip you get. And it almost goes against what could be conventional thinking, where you think you're going too fast into a corner, but if you back off and go too slowly into it, you'll lose the aero load and actually lose overall grip. So this is what racing drivers do very, very well, is keep their foot buried to the floor when everything around them is telling them they should be lifting. Uh, that's where the best racing drivers really come into their own. Um, we've got to mention the fans. Japanese fans are just unbelievable when it comes to Formula One. The my most amazing experiences from my time in the sport have been in Japan due to Japanese Formula One fans. They have turned up at the circuit bringing me gifts as a low, you know, lowly mechanic, uh, let alone the drivers. They were camping outside hotels very early in the morning, queuing to get into the circuit, and I mean queuing four miles down the road, six, seven, eight people deep 
and as you drive in in just even if you're just wearing team kit no matter who you are the crowd goes absolutely crazy it's an unbelievable experience for everybody involved to go through it and so massive hats off respect to the Japanese Formula One fans they love Formula One like I don't think I've seen anywhere else um, you know every country has their own set of fans British fans are incredibly knowledgeable and passionate and, and hardcore Japanese fans are crazy in a good way uh, about the sport that we all love so that makes it pretty special they'll stay in the grandstands for six hours after the race is finished till it's pitch black and all that's happening is opposite the the pit the the pit straight is that the grandstand's full watching the teams pack up long after the cameras have gone home the drivers have left the teams are literally packing up the garages in front of a packed grandstand where they're still waving flags cheering the team on when they come out the garage and just offering general support so it's a it's a brilliant brilliant experience a brilliant race weekend and that is why i'm so excited for it Shall we go and have a quick look at this circuit on the Xbox? Because although you don't get the full experience, nowhere near the full experience, it's still a lot of fun. Come on. Right, I've been talking about how good it is, but let's have a little look at exactly what it looks like from the seat of an F1 car, almost. Right, here we go then, that grandstand I was talking about to the left hand side, this is the only DRS zone as far as we know at the moment on the circuit, a really fast run down into turn one which is a bit of a lift but still hard on the throttle as soon as you get through it, multiple apexes and then we're into the S's. This is that part of the circuit I was telling you about, changing direction at maximum speed, shifting the weight balance of the car from left to right, hoping that the tyres have got enough to hang on all the way through, it's an incredible incredible risk-taking moment hanging on through there then up towards the Degna's a little dab on the brakes into Degna 1 a bigger dab on the brakes into Degna 2 and under the bridge we go this is a tricky corner because it's flat around this corner but as soon as you come out the corner with the car still turning you are stomping on the brake pedal as hard as you possibly can and back up the hill flat all the way around here this looks like a really easy corner but you've got to stick to your line because you're still at the limit of the car's grip. Oh, big dab on the brakes. This spoon, it goes on forever. Multiple apexes through here. You're looking to keep the car in its perfect line, but again, the slightest twitch will spit you off before we head on this fast, really fast run down to one of the best corners in Formula One. Oh, 130R takes everything that a driver has got to be able to keep his foot flat through there. Out of the final section then and back onto the start finish straight and that's a lap of this just wonderful, wonderful circuit. Let's do it again. another average lap as ever around Suzuka but I hope it shows you just how much fun it would be for a racing driver in an actual F1 car. Uh, right so thanks for sticking with me this far before you go though I have another prize to give away from the gpbox.com. Uh, now this one this one comes from Rearview Prince who you have met before if you're a long-term viewer of this channel because they have given prizes away on these kind of videos before but this week they've got a Suzuka special I think you're gonna love it check this out it is very cool look at that and it's even cooler than it looks probably uh, through the screen that you're watching on because this is a really deep black matte black lovely finish uh, on the print with the details in a sort of gray and white of the circuit obviously it's an amazing unique figure of eight circuit but it's got a lot of detail in there and just looks really really classy it would look absolutely fantastic of course framed on your wall and if you would like to have that on your wall all I need you to do is go to the Rearview Prints page at thegpbox.com which I will link 
in the description. I'll make it very, very easy. All I want you to do, we've done this before, go to their page at thegpbox.com, find one of their pieces that you like most of all, and copy and paste the link to it in the description, or in the comments rather, of this video. So go, as I say, I'll make it all very easy in the description uh, if you didn't quite follow that, but I need you to go to the page for review prints at thegpbox.com, find whichever one of their pieces of art that you like best, tell me why maybe, and just pop a very short comment underneath this video, pasting, copy and pasting that particular link, tell me why you like it, and don't forget to use the hashtag, hashtag GPBJAP. Hashtag GPBJAP, and that way I'll be able to find it when it comes to Monday's video where I'll be picking a winner and giving this away to one of you. Uh, good luck with that. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you really, really enjoy the Japanese Grand Prix weekend. Don't forget, of course, if you want to watch it all live, you've got to get up a bit early if you're over here in Europe, uh, but it'll be well worth it, I hope. Um, enjoy the weekend, whatever you're up to, any of you folks, and I will see you on Monday. Ta-la.